And welcome to another episode of Cloud Bytes TV. I'm really excited today because we're going to be kicking off a new series of videos on Lightning Web Components. So for those who've been with us for a while, you might remember um, when Aura Components first came out, it's probably a few years ago now, uh, there was a series we did where we built an application using the Aura framework and we built a series of components. So we built an account list, we built an account uh, information, we built a create task component, and we also built a report view component. And what we did was we built those out using Aura components, showed you how to connect them and get some data down, um, put them all together, communicated with some events in between them to talk about event propagation. Um, and yeah, we built a little Aura app. And it was a really popular series, and there's a link to it below as well with a playlist for all of those in if you're interested in going back and watching them. I still think there's a lot to come from Aura. Um, loads of people are still using it internally within their environments and Salesforce themselves of still using it. So definitely something to be aware of and look into. And in that series as well, we covered a bit around how you should start thinking in components, which is a really important topic. So this is the first video of a new series where we're gonna take that existing application we've got with all of those components we built out and we're gonna migrate it to Lightning Web Components. So Lightning Web Components came out in spring 19. So that's version 45 of the API. Um, they're a really kind of really big change in technology, but also kind of a subtle change as well. Um, and it's a really, really great new piece of kit. So what I wanna do, is I want to take the existing application we've got, which again, watch those videos through if you want to see how that was built out before using Aura. And we're going to take that and we're going to migrate it over to Lightning Web Components and show you how that all works. So this is uh, episode number one. What we're going to do is just before we dive in, I'm not going to go back through a lot of detail over how to think in components and things like that, but I just want to spend a couple of minutes just talking about the difference between Lightning Web Components and Aura Components and why it's really, really important and a great new piece of technology image that you can see here on screen and it's one that Salesforce have put up on a lot of their websites um, and I think it just really illustrates very well the difference between Aura and Lightning Web Components. Um, back when Aura was written, um, you know, back when it first started in I think it was 2012 when Salesforce first started writing it, you know, the web was a very different place. Um, you know, ES5 had just become the standard for JavaScript, so ECMAScript 5. Um, there was a bit of work around events. Um, you know, some rendering stuff was done on the engine. And basically, for you to build um, a programming framework using JavaScript, you had to do a lot of extra work. So at the top, Salesforce were always going to have to do security, which is their, you know, one of their highest priorities, their, their number one priority, um, as they tell people, is trust. Uh, Lightning Data Service to help keep that security and get data backwards and forwards from Salesforce into your JavaScript application, and then some base Lightning components. They were always going to have to do that. Um, and browsers have always done events as well. They've always done events down here at the bottom. Uh, they've got some standard elements. Everyone, I'm sure, is familiar with some standard HTML elements. And browsers have also dealt with rendering uh, for a long time. That is its main function. So the real difference then between the old model in Aura and this new model in Lightning Web Components is this middle band here. And back when Salesforce first started developing Aura, they had a lot of work to do. They had an entire custom component model. They had to build out their own templating engine, um, any custom elements or components they had. They had to optimize the rendering. You know, back then, the Shadow DOM wasn't really a thing that existed. It only just started being talking about. Um, any module management they had to do in a custom way as well. Um, and then, you know, for event communication, they had to deal with that. And there was a lot of work that went into the Aura framework that kind of was, I'm going to say, the plumbing to bring things together. Now, fast forward to 2019. The web is a very different place. <laughs> We've seen a massive change in the power of what um, web browsers are capable of doing and do out of the box. Um, so first things first, web components. They are now a standard. They've now been adopted by most browsers, uh, as have template directives. Custom elements you can now do easily through web components. But most importantly, Shadow DOM is a big part of the standard browser functionality now, as is the standard way of loading modules. Um, and there's also standard event publish and subscribe management, as well as um, event propagation. On top of that, ECMAScript 7 has come out, which is, again, a big leap forward and you know, a nice change in the way in which JavaScript is written. And so the key thing here is that there's a lot more that's out of the box with a browser that Salesforce don't have to deal with anymore. 
And so that's why they can focus on really just this blue band at the top and leave all the orange stuff to the browser. And that's really important because number one, it means that Salesforce can deliver more functionality and focus on the things that they, they should be focusing on. So base components, data security, data services, things like that. It also means that if you're a JavaScript or a, or a Salesforce developer, you then have a much wider array of tools that you might not have had before with Aura. You know, it's far more standard JavaScript and HTML. It's much easier for you to work with. So the biggest thing for me is performance. By running things through the browser and on the hardware natively, you're going to get a massive performance increase. So Lightning Web Components are going to be much faster, much more speedy, much more lightweight, and overall far better in terms of performance and abilities for your solutions and your applications than uh, Aura Components were ever going to be able to be. And that's just the nature of the web. Anything you can do using standard things is going to be quicker if you write something custom yourself. So that's the big difference. As I say, what we're going to do is we're going to dive into um, all of the existing code we've written and go through and update it. The next episode is going to be us taking that account list and it's going to be rewriting that account list. I'm going to put a link to the original Aura one again um, at the end of this video and in the show notes. Um, please uh, go ahead and watch that so you can see where we're coming from and then jump forward to the next video which uh, will be coming up shortly after this. We're going to have a double release this week and that's going to be going through that account list and helping us understand how that works. Hope you found this useful. Um, again, very excited that we're going to be able to play with some web components. Love to hear your feedback in the comments below. Please remember to hit like and subscribe so that you can get all the latest videos as we go through this web component series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.